Okay, here's our second video for week 11. And uh, so we've added our window wall at the end. And now what we're going to do is start putting some windows in. So we're going to start on exercise 3-21 on page 3-93. And what the and I'm going to start out with the textbook version of it, and then when we finish up putting the rest of the windows in, I'm going to show you a little different method for doing this uh, that seems to work better for me anyway. Uh, we'll go ahead and use the textbook. We're going to go to our south elevation. We're going to zoom in on our door area, and we're going to put it into a coarse mode so we don't see all of the hardware. We're going to select our window tool in the architecture ribbon. Mine happens to already be set at fixed 36 by 48, which is the window size we want. And I'm just going to place this window somewhere near the location that I want it. Don't worry about exactly where it is just yet. So I'll put one here and I'm going to put another window on this side. Hit escape, maybe twice. Now on this one, I want to make sure that our window is 5 foot 6 inches from the center line of the door. So 5 foot 6 inches. And we'll select this one and change this one to 5 foot 6 inches. So they're spaced exactly right. And now uh, what we're going to do is take our Align tool, go to Modify, hit Align, and I want to align our doors, the top, our windows with the top of the door frame here. And this would be the top of my window. And we're going to do the same thing. Whoops, hit escape. Do it. I should have had multiples turned on, but align top of the window or top of the door to the top of the window. So now these are in the correct location. Before we finish, the book wants us to go fix something, so if we go back to our level 1 floor plan, we can see that these walls don't line up with the outside edge, so we want to clean these up. So we're going to continue using our align tool, and let's say uh, I want to align to this edge of the wall, this edge, and that just brings it out. Hit escape, and we're going to align this edge of the wall to this edge. That just cleans those walls up. I think the author just uh, realized that she had an out of line wall. And now let's open up our south elevation again. This time we're going to put our windows up in the top of the wall. I'm on page 3-96. So we're going to go back to our architecture tab, select window, same window. We're just going to place this up on the top, uh, somewhere in this location. Hit escape. Now, before I go any further, I want to uh, hit escape again. Oops. There we go. Um, go back to floor plan one. And if you look at these windows, they're actually backwards. The glazing should be on the outside. So click the little arrow key. And that's going to put that glazing outside. Go to level plan 2. <coughs> Oops, don't see my window yet. South elevation. And we'll get this one set first. So I'm going to select the window. And that one needs to be 3 foot 6 inches. 3 foot 6 inches from the center line, from our grid line. And... We're going to set the height of this um, at 4 feet. So I'm going to unselect it, select it again, and the sill height on this needs to be just 4 feet. If we go look at our level 2 floor plan, there's our window, and I want to select this one again and flip it so the glass is on the outside. Now we can go back to our south elevation. And what they want us to do is array this. So I'm going to select the window. We'll select the array tool. We want this to be four windows. Group and associate. 
we want it to go to the last and we want it to be constrained so if I move one window they'll all move so if I just left click here and we go 18 feet left click and left click again now when we go to our level 2 floor plan we see our windows are all on the top so we can uh, actually turn that to fine so now we can see the bricks and whatnot that are running across here floor plan one yep, I think we're good okay So now the challenge of this exercise is we're going, this is finishing up if we look at our south elevation, that covers putting the windows. And the textbook doesn't go through the rest of the windows, but I'm going to just take a, take a look at this one. We know that the sill height on this is 3 foot 2 inches above the floor. So what I want to do is let's put some more windows in here. So I'm going to go this time doing it, doing it in plan view on the first floor. And we're going to come over here select our window and just place it somewhere off this corner and we can set our sill height to three foot two inches and I'm just going to place it right here and it's already facing the glazing is out so hit escape twice you select the window I want this to be three foot six inches now I want um, eight windows across here and I want it to be spaced three foot six inches from this side so if we measure the overall distance from that center line just using our modification tool and our measurement I know that from this center line to this center line is 62 feet six inches if we subtract seven feet from that which is three foot six inches times two we end up with 55 feet six inches so if we take our array tool now select the window select the array we want eight windows and everything else stays the same from this point we're going 66 feet or excuse me 55 feet six inches eight windows so the distance from if I measure the distance from this center point to this window it's three foot six inches if we look at it in our south elevation now there's our windows and they line up with the bottom now we should be able to select these windows and let's see if we can select just the windows which we can we'll unpin them didn't know they were pinned because they're constrained we'll, co uh, we'll copy those windows basically from this point I want to go straight up it's right on that brick line. Yeah, hit escape. Didn't work for me. Let's just uh, we'll just copy them up somewhere close. Yeah, I lost them. Hold on a second. Select our windows. Copy. Well, let me move them up maybe it's because oh, I probably got them constrained too much so that's all right let me just select this one see if I can copy this one up there we go we'll take this one up and what we want to do then is we'll select this window
Let's go to our second floor plan now. Level 2. There's our window. I'm going to ungroup it because it was part of a model group before. And now I can set the height of it to 4 feet. Was that one 4 feet on the second floor? Let's go check. I'll just ungroup it. Yep, 4 feet. So that one's already three foot six. So what we're going to do then is uh, we're going to array that one just like we did before. To last, we want eight windows constrained. From this point, we're going 55 feet six inches. There's all our windows. And I think the height is why the brick kind of goes through there uh, on the visibility graphics as far as uh, what the height is, everything's showing up, uh, underlay is none, view range, so top level is 7 foot 6, let's just change that to 7 feet and see what happens. Nothing. Let's try. Oh, cancel that. Edit. View range. Bottom is at zero at level two. Try four foot six. There we go. If I change this to four foot six, so if I put this back to seven foot six, hit OK. What that does is it cuts that brick out. So it's telling us in our plan view what level we want to see. So by changing that, it kind of makes it look better. OK. So now, if we look at our south elevation, our windows all line up in this wing. So let's go to our um, floor plan level one. We've got two windows we want to put over here. So we'll go to our architecture window and we'll just place a window right here. We're going to flip it out so the glass is outside. We'll go three foot six inches. And we're going to put another window on this side, flip it out, and this one's going to be 3 foot 6 inches. Just so everything from the column lines is the same. So now, if we take, hit escape a couple times, let's take these windows, hold down the control key, and select these windows. We're going to do a mirror by drawing a line. Assuming this is the center point right at the middle of these doors. We'll draw a line up and then that mirrors those first floor windows on here. And we can check to see if that's accurate by just taking our modify measure tool from the center point to the edge is three foot six so we did find the center point so that's one of the reasons so if we go to our south elevation now you'll see that our first floor windows have now been copied or duplicated to the other side let's do the same thing let's take this window we'll ungroup it if we need to oh we don't need to on that one and we'll copy that one straight up actually let's take them both Control, select them both, copy, and we'll bring it up. And it's going to bring it up here anywhere because then we can take our align tool and we'll do multiple alignments on this one. This is what I want to align to, and I want to align this window and this window. 
to that location. So that puts everything in the right area. And now let's go to our second floor line, plan two, or level two, and we'll select this, these two windows, hold down the control key, select these eight windows. Again, we're going to mirror by drawing a line. I know that this wall center point should be the center of the building. Left click, left click again. Now when we look at our 3D, um, not our 3D, but our south elevation, all our windows are on this side. So let's look at it in 3D. There's all our windows on this side of the building. So now let's copy those windows to the back side so they match up. So we'll go to our level one first and I can take, whoops, escape, these two windows, hold down the control key, these eight windows, these eight windows, these two windows, and we want to mirror those to the back side. So just take your mirror tool, this time with just a pick axis, because column line two should be at the center of our building. So if I just left click here, there's our windows going to the back end. Now let's go to our second floor. We'll select, do the same thing. This time we're going to select all of the windows on this side. These two, hold down the control key, these eight, these four, these eight, and these two. So now if we mirror that to the other side, keep our fingers crossed, pick the axis, this is the line, um, something, okay, saying these four, so I think what we need to do is just select this and ungroup each of these windows just because I had undergrouped them before. There we go. Now we can select them. Mirror. Oh, I know why. Because we don't have an interior wall back there. So, understood. So what we'll do is we'll just redraw these windows. So I'm going to take this window here. I'm going to ungroup it. And I'm going to copy it right to here. I can bring this bubble over to this point, key this in at three foot six inches, and let's just we'll take an array of this one. So we'll oops hit escape copy array, and this one's going to be four windows. I'm going to not constrain these. We're going to type in 18 feet. So they match the other side. Yep. Now when we look at our 3D view, we can see our windows almost complete. We just need four windows down on the back side. So now we'll look at our north elevation. These are the four windows I need to bring down. So I'm just going to select those four. And I'm going to copy them down so is it going to miss their host I don't know why let's just try one at a time and see what happens okay that one's fine let's uh, align it we don't need multiple alignments, but I want my window to line up with this edge. Let's go to our level one floor plan. There's my window on the back side. Of course, it shows up here. We'll select it. We'll do an array. 
four windows. And we're going to go 18 feet in that direction. Hit escape. And a 3D view. Now when we look at this, we've got our windows all the way around. So a little finagling and some mirroring and some copying, we're able to put all of these windows in place without too much effort. So that's the end of that exercise. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to our floor plans and we're actually going to put some floor floors in here. So the actual next exercise, 3-22, is our floor plan layout, which we've already done in order to in, uh, put some homework in. And we're going to move past the rest of exercise 4, which is materials. And I hope we can get back to this because it's on customizing and creating your own material categories. So we'll, we'll probably find something that we're going to want to change the material on, but I'm going to hold off on that. Uh, I want to skip right up to uh, exercise... Uh, chapter 5 uh, starts on, well, page 5-1. Uh, wish they hadn't numbered these pages this way, but in Lesson 5, we're going to start a floor plan. We're going to actually put the floors into the building so we can see the division now. So let's go to our Level 1 floor plan. We'll do a double-click with the middle wheel to fit it out. And we're going to Level 1, and we're going to select one of our exterior walls. So this one's good. It's our exterior 3 and 5 8 by 5 8 brick. And what we want to do then is right click on that wall and we can say select all instances in entire project. And it will find all of our exterior walls. And we're going to say, if we right click, now on, down here at the bottom, you see this little pair of eyeglasses shows up. And what I want to do is click those eyeglasses and say, isolate element. So the only thing that we can see now is our walls. Now we're going to architect, uh, select the architecture, so I can unselect, uh, just make sure these are unselected. So now we can see all of our exterior walls only. We're going to select floor architecture. We're using our select walls tool. So we're just going to work our way around and select these walls and make sure the purple line is on the inside of the wall all the way around. If it's on the outside, just you can see it'll cover up that door opening. All the way around. Now, once that's done, we need to do a connection. So we're going to take our line tool and we're going to connect this wall end with this wall end because it didn't pick up our window wall. Now it's got a generic 12 inch floor. We're going to hit edit type and under the type here we're going to select a wood truss with a carpet finish and then we're going to duplicate it and we're going to change carpet finish to VCT, Final Composition Tile. Hit OK. Now we're going to hit our um, Edit tool right here. And we're going to change carpet to VCT. So they say VCT. If you type in VCT, I didn't get anything. So I'm going to type in Tile. And then I can get Vinyl Composition Tile down here. And we'll just say OK. And leave it at 8th inch. 
we'll say OK here. Where it says coarse scale fill pattern, we're going to use diagonal crosshatch. Hit OK. Hit OK again. So now we're looking at a wood truss joist and all we need to do is hit our check mark. Now if you've got a gap in any of these lines it may give you a warning. As long as everything is enclosed and touching when I hit this check mark my floor should show up on the inside. Left click on the outside so we can see this checkerboard pattern now showing the um, uh, vinyl composition tile. Now if we go down to our little eyeglasses here we can say reset temporary hide isolate. So just left click on that and then our walls will come back. Switch to your 3D view. We're going to copy this floor up to the second floor. So if I look at my 3D view now, I just tilt it up. There's our floor down on the bottom floor. So what we want to do is select that floor. You just move your mouse you'll see the blue lines kind of highlight and we're going to select our copy tool and then you're going to say paste but hit the little arrow down and say aligned to selected level and I want my floor to go up to level 2 as a copy hit OK and now my floor is on level 2 so I can't see anything below that level in this 3D view now okay What we're going to do now is do a file save just to be safe and we're going to create a shaft opening um, and this will be for our elevators. So we're going to go to, go to level 2. I'm going to zoom in on our elevator area and uh, we're going to select shaft it's weird that these two are different sizes I thought they were the same size let's go down to our first floor ah okay how'd that wall get moved interesting must have been me so let's go back to our modify I gotta fix that first so I want all my walls to line up with this line and let's do multiple so if I select that yeah there they all go that looks better don't know what happened there but it looks right now our corridor is still 10 feet wide so now we can go back to our level 2 zoom in we're going to select um, go back to the architecture tab and we're going to select shaft and we're going to do this as a symbolic line It says zoom to the elevator area, draw two rectangles for the elevator shaft, align the rectangles to the finished face of the inside walls and uh, I think we should be able to do it with this one and we'll do another one here let's try check mark Sketch is empty. All right, quit sketching. Yes. All right, let's try it again. Yeah. Did it once. Shaft opening it says zoom in. I'm going to draw two rectangles. probably did something backwards align the rectangles to the finished face select now oh, I see select the symbolic line disable the chain 
We're going to select the line tool and we're going to draw an X through these boxes. corner to corner. This will be the symbolic line that indicates that it's a shaft for the elevators. All right. On the properties, pane set the base offset at negative four feet. So we'll come over here and change this to negative four feet. Set the base constraint level one and we're going to set the top constraint at level two and we're going to select the green check mark and there we go We'll switch to the 3D view. We'll take a look at this now and we should be able to see our elevator cars actually setting down inside the shaft. Alright, so a little work we got that one done. Next thing we're going to do, okay, inspect the elevator shaft, activate level 1, and notice that the X's go through the bottom floor. Activate level one. Symbolic lines are visible, but they're in behind. Yep, looks just like that. So I think we're good. Now we're going to go to our stairwell next. This is exercise 5-4. And uh, so let's go to um, level two. That's our elevator shaft. And we're going to zoom into this elevator shaft. So it looks just like the illustration on page 5 11. Select the rectangle tool. And select our yeah, I better follow the directions here. So it says, let me hit escape, get out of that. All right, over there, select the floor. I need to get out there. And there's our BCT on 12 inch joist. We're gonna say edit boundary, zoom in, <coughs> and we're gonna uh, Select our rectangle tool and we're going to draw a rectangle inside this stairwell. Zoom in, place the rectangle and then we're going to pull this, should be able to need to pull a rectangle up here. So I don't know that I can just pull that. No. Nope. There we go. Just select it and pull it right up to the edge. That stair should be right there. So I just hit escape and, and just selected it. So this gives us a landing on this upper floor, so our opening is only going to be in here. We're going to hit our check mark and see what happens. We're going to get a warning. Would you like walls that go up to this floor level to attach to its bottom? If you And just say no. The floors, roof overlapping, yada yada, just say no. Click to our 3D view now, 
and we'll look at this staircase and we can see the difference now that we've got a landing up here that we can see down through to the first floor and our stair landing that extends out to the door. We'll end up having to put a railing there and we'll be doing that a little bit later on. So now the thing is we need to go do this same thing on the other stairwell. So we'll go back to level two. We'll come over to the other stairwell right here and see if we can remember what we did. We're going to go to our select our floor, zoom in, select edit boundary, create a rectangle. We'll go zoom. Actually, we could probably just come right to here, which is even quicker. And once that's in place, just going to hit our green check mark. We'll say no and say no. And now when we look at our 3D view, we should see our stairwell coming up through. Looking very good. Okay. So what I'd like to do now is uh, for our, let's create a three-dimensional view of this area. Um, that we can, I don't need this, delete that. Oh, I'm in there. So if we come back to our home view, click the little house there, that gives us our isometric. And I think this would be a good view to uh, put on our title block again. So let's just go to, I don't need that, that was something I was doing earlier. So we'll just uh, create a new view. If I duplicate that view, and it won't let me anyway, so let's just right click and say new sheet. This will be A101. We're using our D22 by 34 horizontal CIE 101. Hit OK. We'll just take our 3D view and just place it on here. Just like that. If we go to this 3D view again, let's just come over here and take a look at it. What happens if we change this to a realistic view? See how long this takes us. Not too bad. We'll go back to our unnamed. Yeah, that'll be a nice little homework assignment. So we can see all our windows and things in here. Um, some of the things we might turn on are, are shadows, just to give it some look at the transparency. And that looks pretty good. Graphic display, I'm going to hit edit, and I'm going to... Uh, Just increase the exposure. So let's see if I can lighten it up a little bit. Go to photographic exposure, enable. I'm not sure if this oh, go to manual. Let's see if bringing it that way. Ooh. I don't want to do that. Let's check it back to automatic. There. I'll just disable it then. playing around with this a little bit so just trying to brighten it up a little bit with the sunlight put it on about maybe 75 that looks pretty good okay so now I'm gonna rename this one to we're gonna call it 
isometric aerial view. We'll say OK. Double click it. So I'm going to move this little title right down here. And if I select this whole thing, I can bring the little ball back. What we'll do is change the date on it. This is the 10th, so I'm going to say 410. It's 743 in the morning. You believe I'm up doing this stuff at 743 in the morning? Anyway, <coughs> author, make sure you change that to your name if it's not already on there. Everything else, it's already given us the name of the sheet here. So bring it out. Looks good. Just take a quick look inside. I think that's pretty cool. And what we'll do now is we're going to go to our file, print, and we don't need that. We're going to change this to our cute CDF printer. We're going to select properties, advanced, we want to go to our PostScript custom size, 34 by 22. Hit OK. Hit OK. And hit OK again. If I go to my setup and I change this to my CIE 101 34 by 22, make sure your zoom says 100%. We'll say OK. And uh, I'll just do a quick preview. Not going to see everything, but that's okay. Close. Oops, didn't mean to do that. File print should still be there. And we'll just say okay. Make sure I know where it's going. It's going into my CIE 101 Home PDFs folder. I'm going to call it this. I'd saved it before, so I'm just going to call it that again. Hit save and okay. My file already exists, so I'm just going to say yes, replace it. And because it's a raster image, it may take a few minutes for it to come up. If I go look at my printers and drivers, you can see my cute PDF still printing. It's 195 megabytes in size, so it's going to take it a minute to output all that information. If it was just a vector drawing with just lines, it wouldn't take that long. But we'll let this run through its course. Show a little patience. Again, it's 7.45 in the morning, so I'm going to take a drink of coffee. Which is cold. Okay. doing this early because we're having a weenie roast this afternoon just in case you're wondering so there we go hit save yes patience paid off close this out close this out I'll just minimize this for now because I want to go check my drawing to see what it looks like uh, PDFs there's my level 1a Ooh, good size file and there it is so we're Zooming in on it just to take a look at the details. Yep, looks good. Very cool. Back out. Everything's good. Got my name on it. Do a file save. It's already saved, so just close it out, and that's what you'll be inputting for your uh, homework for week 11, what will be due next Wednesday. So again, that should get us up to where we need to be, and the following week we'll be uh, adding some furniture. we got to put a roof on this thing at some point, which is going to be, a, you know, that'll probably take us uh, a whole class to do that just to make sure we get the roof in the way we want to uh, and then we can start doing some outside site work and decorating and see how that looks um, 
But again, we'll be following the book. I'm just going to kind of jump around a little bit until I can get all this stuff uh, placed in here. Um, so lesson seven is roofs. If you want to take a look at that ahead of time. That should uh, take care of us for today. So that's your second video. Good luck, and if you have any questions, send me an email.